Welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. Uh, today we're going to discuss, uh, we're going to continue our discussion of perturbation theory, which we started in the last lecture on transitions and, um, uh, yeah, transitions. So we recall from the last lecture, at the end of the last lecture, we found that if we apply a perturbation to a system at some particular time, we'll call that time equals zero, and that uh, perturbation is applied for a duration delta t, then we have that the uh, the wave function at um, at time delta t is equal to a part which uh, is the usual time dependence. This what's in the parentheses here. This is the usual time dependence of the unperturbed Hamiltonian. Uh, so this is basically just the time, the normal time evolution of the of the um, uh, of a, a system, an eigenstate. Okay, so a system that's in an eigenstate psi sub n, and then this part is the perturbation part, which has a time dependence. <coughs> Um, which is which what brings in a different time dependence and so when we multiply the uh, perturbation operator which again has units of energy times the eigenfunction that you start in psi sub n um, then we get a new function okay and that new function can be described in terms of other stationary states and so this term here can be described as a sum over uh, indices uh, a sum over um, uh, amplitude coefficients times the eigenfunctions, okay? <clears throat> since it is an arbitrary function, since uh, this operator W acting on uh, on the eigenfunction is an arbitrary, is a, is a different superposition state, uh, I mean is an arbitrary function that can be described as superposition of the eigenstates, okay? And you can solve for the, trend, the, the coefficients in this uh, superposition expansion just by projecting the um, uh, the the new state, which is obtained by again operating on the initial state psi sub n uh, with the uh, perturbation operator, whatever that is, it depends on the problem, depends on the situation. That gives you a new function. You project that onto the mth. Um, so you start in in state n, you end up in state m you project this new function onto the mth function in the normal way that we do this in quantum mechanics. Uh, you integrate over all space and that'll give you the amplitude coefficient. If you square that amplitude coefficient it turns out that that basically gives you the transition probability from state n to state m. Okay? Um, and then you can just uh, basically just read it off right here. We just square um, we just uh, square the a sub m, okay? So that's uh, just a reminder of what how we ended up last time. And now we're going to apply this to the simple case of an infinite square well uh, that we discussed in a practice problem, okay? So, <clears throat> excuse me, we imagine that an electron is trapped in a one-dimensional infinite well uh, in the ground state uh, psi one zero. So we, that's the initial state, okay? That's the initial state. And um, the, we, we, we're going to set up the geometry of this well a little bit different than we did earlier in the course. Instead of the well going from 0 to L, so the, the well obviously has a width L, but instead of going from 0 to L, which is the easiest way to solve this problem, um, we're going to go from minus L over 2 to L over 2. And that is simply just because, uh, as you'll see, this um, allows us to make some nice comparisons. Um, it's, the physics is the same. It's independent of what you call the origin. It's just that the actual form of the solutions that you write down has to, does depend on <clears throat> on uh, where you call zero, as we'll see. Okay. So again, um, at at x equals minus l over two, and at x equals l over two, then the potential goes to infinity, and therefore, as before, that means that the wave function must be zero in that region. 